Hello, everybody. My name is Phil Chan, and I'm the co-founder of Final Bow for Yellowface. Welcome to What's the Tea? A daily conversation with dan a dancer of Asian descent during the month of May for Asian Pacific Heritage Month to highlight the achievements and experiences of Asians in dance. Today, I'm very excited to chat with Jeffrey Sirio from English National Ballet, um, who is joining us uh, live from, where are you in the world? Uh, right now, I'm currently in my flat in London. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, thank you for taking the time. Um, so, how are how are things going with you? How are you dealing with, um, you know, the, the the lockdown? What are you missing right now? Like, what uh, what would you be dancing? Like, what's what's going on with you at English National right now? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to stay sane. <laughs> it's been you know it's been hard. I think all dancers right now have felt this. Um, you know, trying to take class in your living room or whatever space you have, kitchen is not ideal. Um, but we're making do, it, right? <laughs> it's really hard to do those ponches when the refrigerator door keeps <laughs> opening on you, you know? Like I'm holding on to my brick wall. So like <laughs> I have this this beautiful brick wall, but like my kitchen is too small for a ballet class. So I've been doing it there. So um yeah, but thankfully like Har like Harlequin has has sent out um, these amazing small awards for all these uh, different companies. So we've been, been able to um, kind of just take bar and do a little bit center. But yeah, trying to stay sane. Um, been trying to do be creative as well. Um, I've been, you know, trying trying to do some like in, I don't know if you, some people have followed my page so uh, on Instagram. So I've been doing some improvs and like I've been doing some live DJ sets, which has been really fun because it's a hobby of mine since I was a kid. So. Oh, that's been fun, but um, I'm really missing being in the studio, like going to work, um, actually working, like sweating, working, uh, using my brain to uh, learn choreography or dance, just like have that freedom of space. Mm -hmm. Really missing that. And uh, unfortunately, we, we had to, you know, stop uh, because of quarantine and we stopped right before uh, the new creation of Akram Khan's uh, Creature, which was like a huge, huge production that we were about to put on for English National Ballet. And that was, that was sad, but you know, it, we're going to get to do it eventually. And like all, like all art, I mean, we have like, just got to keep going. We have to keep going. And um, we've missed out on a couple tours, which is really unfortunate. And um, we'd be doing Swan Lake coming up, which is very difficult too. <laughs> but um yeah, I mean, at this point, it's been, what, five, six weeks into it, and it's just like, what what can you do? You can't do anything about it, except, yeah. you know, live your life and keep going, yeah. go forward, so. So, uh, would love for our uh, the people tuning in who might not know you very well, uh, mm -hmm. would love to hear more about your background. When did you start your dance training? Where are you from? Um, kind of what's your, what's your story? Yeah, I'm originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And um, I come from a family that um, my father's Filipino and my mother's from the U.S. And she is uh, Irish German descent. Um, so I'm a happy. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I started dance because of my sister, really. Um, she, she's, a, she's a ballerina. She's principal at Boston Ballet. And Who's your sister, for the people who don't know? <laughs> Leah Sirio. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Leah Sirio is my, my sister, so uh, yeah. And um, we moved to uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania at the time to go to Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet. And um, it's, a, it's a small school, but very intense school for classical ballet. And at the time, I was not dancing. I was just the, the little so soccer kid or the little brother that would hang around the ballet studio for until Leah was done. Um, and yeah, one day I was just, just decided, I think I was around it so much and grew up around ballet and art. And I've always had an interest in art as a kid um, that I was just like, yeah, let's try it, mom. And she's like, really, you really want to try it? And it's like, yeah, why not? Like, take, let's give it a chance. And um, kind of from there, it, it sparked a, um, I don't think it was an absolute love of dance right away. I think what was cool was like the social aspect of it all. Um, 
and in my class when I was a kid it was five other other boys in the class so it was like it felt like oh cool like this is like this is just like another sport for me like to hang out and and it kind of just progressed from there um I don't think I fell in love with it until I was around 14 um and I, that's when I, I saw Fernando Bajones um I was like I want to be like him and uh from there that's that's kind of where the the trajectory went um just kept dancing so. so at what point did you say that um you know beyond um you know seeing him dance what at what point were you like okay i want to do this but like not just be able to do this but like have this be my career and do this professionally yeah. at what point did you make that mental switch of like why you were doing this yeah well, it was funny it was like I saw him, I think it, it was like around, I want to say like 13, 14, I saw him in a video. Cause I, there was a point where I, I kind of want to just quit dance. And I think it was just got too much for me. And I just uh, felt a little, little discouraged. And it's an I'm, awkward age anyway. Like it's yeah. really like, all boys at that age, you're just like, it's really hard. To Absolutely. Be in LA and in puberty and in middle school, like all at the same time. It's yeah. Like impossible. <laughs> Absolutely. And like, I had to like, I also had to give up um, like playing soccer. Like I was playing soccer a lot. And there was a point where at a young age, at like 12 years old, you had to decide like you either do dance or you do soccer. And it's like, oh crap, like really? Can I do both still? But like, I get it at the time, like it was, I was progressing in dance and I wasn't really progressing in soccer. I was just playing for fun. Um, so it was like, my mom was like, you know, you have to choose. Like it, it doesn't matter what you want to, what to do it's just you have to choose one um so i think i felt like i was uh, progressing more in dance stuff uh, obviously i was like you know i'll keep up with dance but yeah i um what, around yeah thir i think it was 13 14 i was like i saw fernando and then i was like i i, I might want to do this as a career like my sister like at that point my sister was was already a uh, either in the second company of Boston Ballet or a quarter ballet member at Boston. So I knew it was possible. Um, it was just, it was a matter of like, do you want to do, do you want to do it as a profession? And I, I mean, I, I was talking about this the other day, it's like 14, a really young age to be like, yeah, I'm going to do this as my career. But like, that's, that's how dancers as, as dancers are. Like you have to decide early on in your, in your life. I feel like, especially in ballet, it's like you have to you have to know you, if you really want it or not yeah and that's fine if you don't like if you go up to 18 and graduate school and then don't want to do a company yeah but then it's fine but like at a young age you have to commit to something especially in dance right what was that dynamic like with your sister i mean obviously she was in the, the professional track as well were you mm -hmm. comparing yourself to her was she did she have a good relationship with you like helping you out was there mm -hmm. uh, did you guys ever have to dance together? Was there ever any rivalries? Like, what was that dynamic like? Yeah. Well, Lee and I have such a great, uh, great relationship. So uh, the difference between us is five years. And so but she's always been supportive of me and I've always been supportive of her. I don't feel like we've ever had like this sibling rivalry of, of dance. And I think also it helps because we're the opposite sex. Um, and but i knowing leah like i don't think she would ever have been like that especially if, if is, is, is she ever like hey you got to work on your spots here's a trick or like is you did you guys totally. Have that? totally yeah totally and as i was growing up there was she would correct me a lot and um and especially like i eventually joined boston and like we worked together and there's not a lot there's a cool i think there's a small amount of siblings that like dance in the same company um but it, it, she's she was she was very very supportive we lived together too we lived together for three years um so we have a really good relationship uh, obviously siblings always argue and it's always like that but we love each other regardless <laughs> but yeah it's now since we're we're older we're very supportive of each other so it's like it's um it's it's a good support system there's never yeah. been any sibling rivalry or anything like that 
yeah that's fun well we're, yeah. well i think we're trying to chat with her as well this month awesome. so let's I'm let's fine. we'll get her take on it too okay <laughs> <laughs> um so you were talking a little bit about your your ethnic heritage um mm -hmm. tell me more about um to what degree are you connected to it and how do you bring that experience into your dancing as an artist sure um so my, my father is officially american um he was a navy brat his father um was uh, in the u.s navy he's filipino um so he w he was moving around a lot in different uh, countries and different states um and his father really wanted my father to be american they wanted to have an american lifestyle um and he, he's also the oldest of three brothers so he's very american um my connection with the, my filipino heritage is is not is not massive um what i really have is is just basically my connection between the my dad's family's um side, side of the family um and i guess yeah it, we haven't i haven't really taken um a chance to like really utilize my heritage in in an artistic way or in a dance way um I've been trying to get to the Philippines. I have not been yet. Like everyone's like, how have you not been to the Philippines? And I'm like, yeah, I haven't. Um, every time I, I, I'm about to go or work there, it something happens. There's always like something. Um, so I always say it's not meant to be. It, at the right time, it will be, and it will be awesome. Um, but uh, currently, you know, the, my, dis, um, my heritage hasn't really had any effect in, in my, my dance or yeah. my life right now i mean obviously um you know i am who i am um, and i think that's partly because my father and my mother so um and we've had such mixed backgrounds um everyone yeah yeah i would love to set you up on a gig with gina to the philippines because i know she's also trying to get back and she also has a similar yeah. story of i think her dad and, and she'll she'll tell it better than i do but um trying to raise her as as assimilate as opposed to um, kind of holding on to the culture. So she's now um, as an adult trying to rediscover those roots and then right. like reclaim that side of her. So it's just been very interesting to watch her do that, especially right. someone like for me, who's like just takes it kind of for granted because I grew up with it, you know, in, absolutely, absolutely. in a different way. Um, so tell me about, um, how do you think the dance world is doing in terms of like race and representation um, hmm. in general? Like how yeah. are we doing? Rep report card, like a through right. how are we doing? I think, you know, it, it's, this is a conversation that's going to be ongoing, I think. Um, yeah. and personally, I think right now we could be doing better, but we're not doing bad. Um, so like C plus B minus, like I'd where, where like, are you thinking? B B B plus B minus B um, plus B minus yeah and I'm 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 someone who I'm a bit big advocate for like um, I'm just I'm I'm a big supporter of everyone so regardless of how do I say it <laughs> um, I just yeah I think that we can take we could take time and maybe represent different heritage heritages better. But I also think that like it's it it's hard with within the classical ballet, um, and and this is something that you uh, you you and Georgina have brought to light is the fact that like there are some there there are a lot of racial things in in dance, and I think um, we can do better with representing a, a heritage um, in a, a more respectful way. Um, well, I think it's just, it's, it's not even about, uh, I think it's not, it hasn't traditionally been focusing on respect. I think it's mm -hmm. more just been, um, we, we want to portray other places. We don't have the resources to travel to all of these amazing places, mm -hmm. um, nor do we have exposure to these cultures. So we're just going to use our imagination and create something fantastic that maybe represents China or the Middle East or Native yeah. Americans or whatever, whatever is the fantasy. Sure. Um, and then uh, because we're a conservative art form, you know, that we have to pass on tradition because we don't have anything written yeah. down. So we can't, it's not like we have 
uh, Shakespeare's words so we can say, oh, well, at least we have the play forever. It's like, if you don't tell the next cast of Swan Lake how to do it, no one, like, then it's gone. So, yeah. so you know, we pass on these traditions and then this old aristocratic art form connects with diversity, equity, inclusion in spaces like America and the UK where we are more diverse. And, and, and so we do have neighbors who you know, Indian neighbors, and we're still doing by Adair. So like, how do we balance that? And whereas like, you don't have that problem in Russia to this day, you know, yeah. they still do by Adair and blackface and like, no one has an issue with it because they just don't have the same social makeup that we do in diverse places. So um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's just something that we have to talk more about. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so do you personally have any experiences that you'd be comfortable sharing about mm -hmm. how maybe um, you were perceived in a certain way because of your race or you had an experience doing yellow face or doing, you know, nutcrackers or do you have anything like that yeah. where, that just made you feel a little off that you'd be willing to share? You know, it's funny. I, I was, I was just speaking to my mother about this because I told her that I was going to, I was going to do this interview. And um, I was saying like, I grew uh, like uh, I like I was saying I was at Central Pennsylvania Youth Ballet and we did Balanchine's Nutcracker as kids. So I grew up doing Chinese and with with also like with the fingers and everything. Um, and like for personally, like as a kid, we didn't know we didn't know any better. And but the school also was like not. They just wanted kids to just dance regardless of your race. They, it didn't they, it didn't matter like they wanted you just to go out there dance regardless of your race and if you had the talent to do it or if you had the uh perseverance and the um hard work they just wanted you to be to dance and so like i was saying like like we didn't we didn't think any better i had i i grew up around people who didn't look at me as an asian they looked at me as just another person and the dancer, which I'm very fortunate. I, like, and there's some people who, who haven't grown up like that. Um, and yeah, like at Boston or in ABT, I, I also did Chinese and Nutcracker. And like, those were two things that I, you know, pe it's not represented the best, but like, I didn't think of it as any, any, any better. Like, because people would just kind of just see me as me instead of seeing me as um an asian um and yeah i mean i don't i don't think i've had any ill ill memories of of doing doing things like that um so yeah that's kind of the best i guess the best representation or of of, of my side of things your experience yeah my yeah, experience thank you. So. thank you for sharing that yeah um so thinking back to role models um mm -hmm. you know you obviously danced with many companies around the world and I'm sure. sure a lot of young dancers look up to you um you know what advice would you have someone who you know who's maybe on that cusp of do I do it do I not yeah um, you know and and you know especially dancers who might be Asian American like what uh, what advice would you have for them about like how they should pursue this and what what do they need to do I think for young dancers they need to remember that um that this this art form it, it, it is an amazing art form and and the next generation has to carry it um but also knowing that every day is 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 hard work every day is going to be uh can be gruesome um that just to just to really dedicate yourself to it um if you want it if you want it and if you don't want it and that's fine there's also some things that you can learn throughout your dance career that you can take into other art forms or other businesses. Um, and I just feel like that people are, are sometimes expected that just to, uh, to be handed it to, like just be like, oh, here you go. But you really have to, you really have to work for it. And I think like if you're, if you want it, be dedicated to it, do your research, um what yeah. is that what do those things actually mean what is what is being dedicated yeah. to it mean and, and what does doing your research mean what is yeah that, what is that well i think like from for me like being dedicated to the art form 
having the respect to uh, of of the dance of dance, having respect in in the studio, having respect to your I don't want to say elders, but to your your superiors. Um, I think being dedicated to hmm, eating I, and sleeping well. Yeah, you know, eating, sleeping well. Um, not, not going to the parties, you know, if you have a show <laughs> <yeah>. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, not going to the parties. No, like, yeah, I think, but I mean, you have to live life, but you also, you have to be. Did, did you go to your, did you go to your prom? See, I was homeschooled. Oh, so you didn't. You didn't <laughs> I didn't have that. prom. <laughs> Uh, so there you go. You're going to skip prom. So are you, <laughs> are you dedicated enough to skip your prom? No, but I know a lot of people who did go to prom that are professional dancers. <laughs> I just think, yeah, you just, um, even staying behind after work and I'm working on something like that's, that's fine. There's nothing, there's no, no wrong in that. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm probably not doing it justice. <laughs> I'm terrible at this. <laughs> I think, I think you're great. And I think either you'd be surprised at how many young dancers are probably looking at you like Buhanas and saying, oh, I want to dance just like Jeffrey. <laughs> um, no, but so, also research, I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but the research also, I think like, not just also looking at ballet, but also looking at contemporary dance, looking at yeah. things that are bringing into the new realm of, of classical and neoclassical. Like, and I think I'm a big advocate for that. So who are those people for you? Who are like, who, who's on your list of people that are movers and shakers? Movers and shakers. Like yeah. dancers? Jeff, Jeffrey's, yeah, Jeffrey's, Jeff, Jeffrey's list of movers and shakers. <laughs> oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'm going to name any like people, but I, I mean, choreographers I've looked yeah, at. Like, yeah, who are, yeah who, are you, who are you like, oh, they're bringing something new to ballet. I like their work. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm a big, big Crystal Pipe fan. Massive. Okay. What do you um, like about her work? What I like about it is it's very, um, com it's very complex, but doesn't look complex. It's like, it, it flows so, so well. And what's amazing is that she has a aspect of, well, she's a, she's a Bill Forsyth baby. Mm -hmm. So she's worked under Bill for years. So she has that class. She well, was a classical dancer, then was working with Bill. So he, she has Bill's technique within her so she has that opposition she has the structure she has yeah, the musicality yeah. like absolutely but, yeah. her way yeah. of moving uh through patterns is is incredible I think. yeah um and i'm just a huge fan of of her um but there's so there's so many different choreographers and that's what i'm saying do do your research yeah look look at who you want who who you want to work with or who you want to dance under even if it's just classical ballet or if it's in contemporary, or both, like what directors are bringing what, what, um, who's coming up and who's not, or like, yeah, what do you, what do you want? That's, that's research, knowing like where you want to be in this dance world. Now you have your own collective as well that are sort of asking some of these questions. Yeah. Um, and, and like you're kind of putting your money where your mouth is so you're not just saying like oh i'm i'm curious about all these choreographers you're actually saying like no i'm gonna raise the money i'm gonna hire these choreographers and i'm gonna give them opportunities to make work and explore these boundaries can you tell me more about that process how's that going um you know is is that a, a model that you recommend to other dancers um sure. you know and, and kind of looking towards the future with um, coronavirus, you know, is a leaner, meaner model like that going to do better post-corona than, say, a large ballet company with five million dollar ballets that have to go up every other week? Sure. Yeah, so Siri Collective, a little background on Siri Collective, Leah and I um, decided to create Siri Collective out of a dream that we wanted to do something um, during the summer. And most American companies are laid off in in the summer. So that's kind of where our idea came was like, what, how can we support colleagues within um, a creative way? And at the time I was, I was, I was, I was choreographing um, with Boston Ballet. I did a world premiere at the time and I was doing multiple projects on the side and Lee and I spoke and we were like, well, why don't we just like, why don't we create a, space where we can 
create work in a safe environment without like directors or um yeah basically directors saying like you you have x y and z to do and you have to use this music or some sort of music in this in this production or this triple bill um and i felt like a lot of choreographers tend to have like these restrictions on their choreography and they don't really get to say um what they want or their voice unless you're like you know you're a top choreographer and they're just like okay here's the money make something we're gonna give you a million dollars or whatever um and so we were like yeah let's do it let's try it let's see what happens we reached out to uh, some private donors and and uh residencies that connections that we had and it kind of just came to fruition we created two weeks where we just i choreographed a piece and then we performed it in two different venues um very small venues at the time and so it's been six years um and what we really aim to do is bring in um yeah people that maybe don't have the chance to perform or or not to perform to to work to with work yeah. yeah, to make work and or work with ballet dancers who, or, or maybe contemporary dancer or choreographer who hasn't gotten to work with ballet dancers. I think it's, it's very different within the dance world. Like you have contemporary dancers and sometimes ballet dancers that can kind of move in a contemporary way. And so with choreographers, it's like it's an amazing opportunity to work with different bodies and different different platforms of dance. I Go ahead. Especially as you're as you if you are. Um a dancer that or a choreographer that might not be able to receive attention from a larger company yet yeah. either in their career or because of just your background you know might not be a right fit on paper sure. um, and so so to be able to say i'm coming in i'm making a work and i'm given the instruments like these top dancers to work with when yeah. given these tools this is what i can do and for you guys to then produce a video for them that they can then send out to other companies and say, hey, Kansas City Ballet, hey, Boston Ballet, hey, you know, whatever, I, I made this work with these six dancers, give me a chance next season, or let me join a choreographic process program. It, it awesome. opens up so many doors just by giving someone that one shot to actually have a produced experience. So I think that's yeah. really great. And, uh, and I think very important model for the future for us to develop and find new talent um, mm -hmm. because I, I don't think the old ways are necessarily discovering the most interesting choreographic voices i think we will find more people through this model so i'm really glad yeah. dancers are starting to play with this idea absolutely yeah and it, it's um, been an interesting process it's it's been really fun and i mean we're still trying it's very small i mean like it's been six years but we're still it's baby steps yeah i mean we're Which trying sort of Brings me to my next question. Um, as we're sort of wrapping up here, uh, I know that uh, all of our arts organizations are suffering. Um, and so if any of our, our viewers are interested in supporting you, either with the Serio Collective or English National Ballet, um, how can they do that? Yeah, so for uh, our project, we are starting to um, take donations for the summer. Um, and the easiest way is seriocollective.com. Um, and you, there's a donate page. Um, and if you feel like it, we'd love it. If not, no worries. Check out our page anyway. And um, for English National Ballet, um, the same. They're on their English. Um, they're doing a donation. They have a donation page on their website. And that's ballet.org. No, 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 ballet.co.uk. Sorry. Um, yeah. And, um, but... I mean, we've been very fortunate. We we are still getting paid, but on a twenty percent cut. Uh, I know that most companies. I mean, it's crazy right now, especially in the U.S. A lot of companies are just not getting paid. And if any viewer that's watching this, like, go support any sort of dance campaign, if if you are or arts organization, like, if you can, it doesn't even matter who or what, like. Just support the arts. That's that's really what the the, the goal is here. Um, I think that is that is great advice because I think that's one going to be one of the things that we need the most when we all come back yeah. together. Um, uh, I'd love to uh, to close this out with a sort of a lightning flash round. If you could give me one or two an word answers to these. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm nervous. <laughs> Unscripted. 
<laughs> ready to go. Okay. Favorite dance movie? <laughs> um, uh, White Knights. Dream role? Um, <laughs> um, what are the, I mean, gods, in gods and Dogs, you're Killian. Uh, what is your, like, show-off step? <laughs> show-off step? <laughs> yeah. Um, like, like, what's, what, what are we going to get an air bite out of you for? Oh, I don't, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't no know. Idea. Okay, pass. Who's your, who's your ballet crush? Ballet crush? Um, I don't think I have one. <laughs> Um, let's say Misty Copeland. Misty Copeland, okay. <laughs> um, uh, worst costume you've ever worn? Oh, um, it was actually, it was Capelia in the Chinese doll in Dr. Capelia. That was the worst costume. I had to sit there forever. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think that's a good place to end. I can't yeah. talk that. So um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you again, Jeffrey, for making the time to chat. Uh, make sure to check out our Instagram page right now to reveal who tomorrow's dancer is and tune in at noon Eastern time for our next conversation. Jeffrey, thank you again. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Yep. Take care. Take care.